bone is living tissue, okay? Has its own blood supply and is a store of mineral, calcium. It's also very protective. So it's the bone that houses your brain, covers your ribs and your heart, your chest, and also provides support for your organs as well as the muscles. Now, so having said that, because it is living tissue, then that means it is subjected to the various things that would affect any living tissue. So anything offensive, you know, poor diet, poor nutrition, as you would see probably in kids not getting enough sunlight, being malnourished will affect the quality of the bone. Hence, the bone is not strong enough in which you have conditions like rickets, where the children's leg may be either bokeh and they actually look very ill. As you get older, you have the effect of the hormones on the body, especially in women that are postmenopausal. Estrogen is very protective for the bones. So after menopause, the withdrawal of estrogen tends to make the bone very weak in what we call osteoporosis. Another way for you to look at it is to consider it as porous bone. So osteo being bone, porosis being porous. All right? So in between, that tells you a lot. You need to eat healthy. You need to exercise because bone is that's what we call wolf's law. So as you use the bone, it gets the message that it needs to do more work. So it gets stronger. The stronger the bone is, the better the muscles are in good condition and they feed off each other, okay? Because it is living tissue, calcium and other things are also very important. So vitamin D via exposure to sunlight, calcium from your diet as well as um, vitamin D from your diet are very, very important. And once upon a time, we used to believe that as Africans, we could never be affected by vitamin D deficiency. Um, over time, studies have shown that that is not correct. So, especially nowadays that um, a lot of people have to stay indoors to work and don't go out to work as much as they would, so not enough sunlight. So vitamin D deficiency is a common problem and COVID also brought that to the fore. Vitamin D is very, very good, it's protective for organs and also very helpful for bone. So. Our question is more like the chicken or the egg, which one came first? And I'll explain why. Now, a person can be obese if one of the factors I mentioned, exercise. So essentially, one model about explaining obesity is that you take more than you expend. All right, so you have more energy and then the body will store it as fat since you don't use it. Okay, so now when the person doesn't exercise, what happens? The bones get weak, muscles get weak. So that is one angle. The other angle is that when the person is obese, there's increased weight for the same amount of bone to work with. What do you think is going to happen? You and I can carry a table together. If four or five people join us, it's easier. But if you ask one person to do it, so the weight increases and you still have the same amount of bone to carry the weight, definitely. So you have um, certain things that have been, it's been implicated in certain conditions like osteoarthritis, in which case you would find out that um, the joints get worn a lot quicker. So you would advise for weight control. Other things that come with obesity, what we call the metabolic syndrome, in which case um, hypertension, diabetes, um, a distortion of how fats are stored in the body now would also affect the bones and how they work as well as the muscles and the blood supply and other things like that because they tend to clog up the blood supply so those guys get affected a lot rests on us that is the healthcare providers doctors nurses as well as the government's um, parastatals who are charged with that. There needs to be sensitization, getting people to be aware that, okay, these are the possible problems. These are the things you should look out for. When you are young, these are the potential issues that you might have. When you get to a particular age, you need to start checking your BP regularly. You need to check your sugar. You need to be sure that things are fine. You should exercise. So it's not just waiting till you get sick, you should inculcate the habit of trying to live healthy. And then also ensuring that, I mean, you get regular checks as and when due 
understand what the family history is like. I mean, if your folks are diabetic or hypertensive, then it behoves on you at some point that you need to start checking out those things so that you don't uh, develop issues. And even if that comes up, you recognize it on time and can seek help. So um, there's a lot, I mean, like what you guys are doing currently is also very helpful. And um, getting the information out there, what are the common health problems that we see in Nigerians? What are the common problems we see in the youth, health-wise? What can we do about them? What advice can we give? And then promote that and, I mean, make it a, a, a regular point of contact for them so that they understand that, oh, okay, none of us created ourselves. The human body is a working machine. And it's just like your car can develop a fault at any point in time. So part of um, what you're talking about is like you maintain, you, you service your car. You want to go on a long journey, you go and service it. Aside from the regular services, so what stops the human body from getting the same thing? Mm -hmm.